The universe has existed for 13.8 billion years, and humanity knows only itself. A state of affairs which seemed immediately suspicious to the freshest and sharpest minds of the 20th century, and which continues to perplex us today. Regardless of all our searching, we have found no evidence to suggest the existence of any others living with us in the cosmos. We are constantly being faced with the question, are we really alone? We have debated this issue for decades, but have never come close to an answer. In all likelihood, the answer will continue to elude us for some time to come. With human beings remaining the only known example of intelligent life to arise in the universe, Pondering on what will happen if contact is made would seem like an exercise in futility. How can you make predictions about something so prone to being so far outside your expectations? How can we go looking for little green men out in the stars when we don't even know what we're looking for? This has been the focus of the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, and over the years, Humanity's thinking on our possible cosmic cousins has grown and evolved into many new areas which were not present when Enrico Fermi first raised his famous paradox. In this series, we're going to be exploring the challenge of trying to communicate with these hypothetical cosmic cousins. We'll be facing the mysteries of nature, the complexity of consciousness, and the limits of technology. For every problem, there's usually a solution, but for every solution, there's usually another problem. In the business of interstellar politics, there is very little room for ignorance. It's my hope that this series will help you to better understand the relevance which the mystery of alien intelligence has when facing the long-term realities of life in this dangerous cosmos. No way. The physicist Enrico Fermi was one of the best of his time. The paradox concerning aliens is only one of a large number of things named for him, ranging from an element on the periodic table to a telescope orbiting the Earth. As a professor of physics, he was known for demanding from his students the full use of their ability to quickly perform complex calculations. In order to exercise this ability, he had them answer his own unique and creative questions which came to be known as Fermi questions. These are questions which seem like they're too unknown or complicated to be answerable, but in fact, a good estimation can be reached when performing calculations based on logical deductions and educated assumptions. A good example of a Fermi question is, how many piano tuners are there in Chicago? At first, the question seems too hard and vague to be answerable without any data being provided, but in fact, a somewhat precise estimation can be reached if you make the proper assumptions ahead of time. If you accept that there are, let's say, 3 million people in Chicago, then you can follow that assumption by also assuming that a family has 5 people, and that 1 in 20 families owns a piano. These are all guesses. Doing some quick math, that would mean that there would be about 30,000 pianos in Chicago. If a piano needs tuning, let's say once per year, and a piano tuner can tune two pianos a day, working 200 days per year, then a single piano tuner can do 400 tunings in a year. 
to accommodate the number of tunings that will be needed by all 30,000 pianos, we would need 75 piano tuners. Just like that, we've come up with a pretty good estimation for the number of piano tuners in Chicago without utilizing any known data. This is the point of a Fermi question, to come to an adequate conclusion despite massive unknowns. For better accuracy, your guesses and assumptions can be updated with the more you learn about the data involved in the problem. All of this is important because the Fermi paradox stems from one such Fermi question asked by Enrico Fermi when he was out to lunch with colleagues in 1950. This was during the height of UFO mania. It had only been a few years since the high-profile Roswell incident, and America was swept up in a torrent of speculation, which still has impacts on more conspiratorial thinking today. As the scientists made their way to lunch, they were casually discussing the UFO craze and wondering aloud about the likelihood of flying saucers being real. It was in the middle of lunch when Fermi finally sat back and asked, where is everybody? He had been pondering the question as a Fermi question and had come to a startling conclusion. How many advanced communicating extraterrestrial civilizations are there in the galaxy is a really clean cut Fermi question, one of the best the physicist ever came up with. While Fermi's on-the-spot calculations were never published, we can only imagine they followed a very similar framework to the classic Drake equation, which was formally presented by astronomer Frank Drake 11 years after Fermi's question was first asked. The Drake equation is as follows. The number of advanced detectable civilizations in the galaxy should be equal to the average rate of star formation in the galaxy times the fraction of those stars which have planets, times the average number of planets that can support life, times the fraction of those which actually do develop life, times the number of those which evolve to intelligence and civilization, times the number of those civilizations who obtain the technology to become detectable on the galactic stage, times the time span for which said civilization is actually releasing detectable signs. While we aren't even close to knowing all of the specific data points required to fill in this equation, the Fermi question methodology of making educated assumptions ought to suffice for a good estimation. Even with the most pessimistic assumptions, this equation gives you a massive quantity of civilizations in the galaxy. When Fermi made his similar calculations at lunch in 1950, he too calculated a massive number of civilizations, and that, by now, humanity should have been visited by extraterrestrials many times over. Despite the UFO craze of the time, Fermi knew that in all likelihood we had not been visited by beings from another world, and this suggested something was missing. Something prevents the seemingly statistically likely from being reality. One major problem with trying to fill in and complete the Drake equation is that so many of its aspects remain unknown to humanity. While the decades since Fermi and Drake have brought further certainty to a few of the equation's elements, such as significant improvement in our knowledge of star systems and exoplanets, there are other parts of it which remain essentially unknowable and must be left up to the kinds of guesses that Fermi questions were designed for. For example, we can never know how many life-bearing planets may give rise to intelligent civilization builders until we've explored the universe at an unimaginably greater depth. To fill in the gaps of our ignorance, theorists have come up with a wide range of Fermi paradox theories which attempt to explain the apparent lack of life in the universe. There may be a great filter 
which results in there being very few advanced civilizations. This filter could be at any stage in development or at any time during the history of a planet's civilization. Perhaps the filter lies in abiogenesis, the sporadic appearance of life being incredibly rare. Maybe most civilizations destroy themselves within a certain time of gaining the technology to do so. Some theorized filters are filters which humanity would have already passed, but others, like atomic annihilation, are still possible outcomes for our civilization. However, there is no known disaster that is likely to occur with great frequency that is also capable of entirely wiping out a planet's civilization or proto-civilization. Even after the most cataclysmic periods of destruction in Earth's history, there was always something left which was able to restart the cycle of life and evolution towards intelligence. Barring the suggestion that abiogenesis is impossible, the filter would probably not be one single factor but rather simply the statistics of survival in an always dangerous universe. For now, there are no clear solutions to the Fermi paradox, nor many clues as to which theories are more likely to pan out. But as we gaze more into the cosmos with better tools to assist the eye, the more clues we are sure to uncover. For now though, we can only speculate on hypotheticals. Thousand light years away, halfway to the center. No way.